Hey guys, Matthew LaCroix here. Today I wanted to do a special kind of video, something truly unique to my channel, a combination of an awareness campaign for an ancient site, as well as new startling information that most people have probably never heard. Today's show was inspired by the need to take action. It was a site that many know that I talk about frequently. Um, for those who have watched my channel often, this is a site that I'm, is dear to my heart. And for those who are new here, um, I'm gonna provide a little bit of an overview at first to explain the significance of this site to catch up everybody at the same level. That way, once you see um, what I'm gonna share in terms of the urgency of why I wanna create a campaign of awareness, is that there are truly disastrous things going on right now at the city of Eridu. And I have photos halfway through that are really gonna highlight that. But in order to really grasp the significance of this, for this message to be heard, we really need to have a little bit of history and an understanding of why Eridu is so important and why this campaign and this information is so important. So I hope you enjoy um, some of this. I put a lot of work into creating this campaign and creating um, a, a an understanding of what Eridu is. So for those who don't know, Eridu is in the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia. It's at the near the conflu confluence of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, where it empties into the Persian Gulf. Now this was where supposedly everything started. This is where civilization was first lowered from kingship down from heaven to create the first city on earth, where everything from metallurgy to astronomy to understanding physics to animal um, husbandry to growing massive agricultural crops using um, using rivers and, and so forth. The birth of civilization began here. And I have a map just to highlight to show where Eridu is and location to other ancient Mesopotamian cities. But we're going to do a little bit of background. We're going to do a little bit of history and you really get into this to try to understand why this is so important. So thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you can understand the importance of this place and, and help this campaign that I'm trying to create here. And I have more information as we go along. So to start, this is an artist's rendering of what Eridu likely looked like back in antiquity, um, well over 10,000 years ago, um, completely contradicting what our modern history books are telling us based on so much evidence that we're gonna get into in a, in a minute here. But basically, under, just imagine when you see this depiction that an ancient city built in pu a pure spot of perfection to create a civilization on the banks of these fertile and um, very important rivers that connected to all different areas. I ran all the way up to Anatolia, Turkey, um, down to the Persian Gulf, which then leads you all over to Egypt and around the world. So that's why this is such an important spot. And this depiction shows these famous reed boats um, that they used to use in a lot of the channeling in the areas because there were reeds growing all over the place. And, and you'll see why that's important as we go along here, because it's indicative of this region. So moving along, because I have a lot, a lot to cover here, we have to try to understand a little bit of history of Eridu. Now, the most important part of Eridu, arguably, bes besides the city, is this single mountain that stands out in the middle of nowhere. It's the only elevated spot in miles and miles and miles in this open desert. And this mountain was, a was an ancient temple, one of the most important temples literally in the world, known as Ia or Abzu Temple. And because Abzu meant, was a term for the underworld. And Ia was a god of that underworld ocean, um, god of fresh water, god of magic knowledge, god of the oceans. Um, and he was banished to the underworld based on a lot of different reasons. That is a, it's a complicated story. So understanding that this is his sacred temple, this is the most sacred place for him. This was his temple, and you'll notice in the depiction, which was done by artists from um, accounts that have been described of it long ago, and depictions that you can read in cuneiform tablets, they created this. And you can see that it's not just a temple on the mountain, but it's a temple that has entrances almost reminiscent of Egypt that go down into the underworld, which is going to be interesting for why I'm creating this campaign of awareness. This is a depiction that's been done, you can find on Wikipedia, of what these temples looked like, how magnificent and how well built they were. And this is the temple of Ia Abzu on the hill that we'll get more into, but that's essentially what these temples looked like on the mountain and on top. Now, for those who don't know this information as well as others, I wanted to start by sharing 
one of my favorite tablet readings that described Eridu and why it's so important. Most people have heard of the Sumerian king list. So I didn't want to use that as a reference, but that's obviously another one you can use to see the city and why it's important. Um, you can also use the Uruk list of kings and sages as another tablet that mentions it. But in particular, this is going to be Eridu Genesis. This city, Eridu mentioned as the first city, can also be read in other tablets as well. So keep, keep an eye out for that reference because it's every time you see a cuneiform tablet from Mesopotamia that's been uncovered from the Ashurbanipal Library or libraries in Babylon, this Eridu is always the first city that is shown as being on earth created. And so in, uh, I want to read just a little part from Eridu Genesis. Basically, when the royal scepter was coming down from heaven, right, kingship, same as the Sumerian king list, the august crown and royal throne already being down from heaven, the king regularly performed to perfection, the august divine services and offices, and laid the bricks of those cities in pure spots. The firstling of the cities, Eridu, she gained to the leader Nudamud, who was the name, Nudamud was the name for Ea or Enki. The second, Bad Tibera, she gave to the prince and sacred one. The third, Larak, she gave to Palisag. The fourth, Sapar, she gave to the Galleon Utu. The fifth, Sharupak, she gave to Ansud. So these are literally demigod kings that are ruling these, these cities that essentially they were given designation by the Anunnaki, the higher, the hierarchy of it. And so this city is the very beginning of where it started, okay? Now, a little bit of history into this site. This the, the Eridu and the main city complex started to be excavated in the late 1800s, about five years after the Ashurbanipal Library was found by Austin Henry Laird in 1848. So this site was just being discovered after they had been try to figure out where these ancient cities are. And this depiction though, is basically the last time that it was visited by archeologists. This is the Oxford University. And this is Eridu circa 1946. And they're out here doing excavations, research, checking this out. And basically we get to see what it looked like. And here it is another another picture from that time when the university came. Oxford came and took these photos and, and, and explored the site and they found incredible artifacts. But that's the whole why this whole story is bizarre and why we're going to get into why this is so important, this campaign. But this is what they found. And this is in the British Museum still today. And it shows that they find they found this ancient tablet depicting a king of Ur the third, Amar Sin. And he was a king of Eridu and it's housed in the British Museum. Now, here's the wild thing. Those pictures taken in 1946, they supposedly excavated until 1948 and then all work ceased. So they found these incredible tablets found the ancient city of Eridu mentioned as the first city on earth. And then they decided to cease all archeological digs. The entire area was abandoned. Okay. And if you don't believe me, get ready for some of the photos and some of the evidence I'm going to show for that, to show th that this is perhaps the greatest conspiracy of any ancient site in history. This is the beginning of what I hope is going to be a campaign to, to protect this site and, and bring in archaeological digs from nations all around the world so it can be fair and honest and try to truly uncover and find what these treasures are that remain. And you'll see some of those treasures in a moment. Now, let's jump forward. Here we are. This is 2021. This is what you're going to see if you go on Google Maps right now and type in Eridu in Sumer. This is where you're, your first place you're going to go to. <clears throat> now, I, get a, I kept a, a map in the top left just as a reference guide for people, and just in case they you know, aren't familiar as we go along where this is. But basically one of the things you'll notice if you look at the map is Eridu is actually set apart a little bit from those rivers. Now that's important to understand because notice that Uruk and Ur and Lagash and Babylon are all located in the confluence of those rivers now, okay? Or at least this is the Fertile Crescent map from say circa 4,000 years ago or so. But look at Eridu. It's, it's quite a bit further away, isn't it? That shows you how much older that city is to all the others. Because, and as I'm going to get into, my hypothesis is that the Euphrates River and Tigris used to flow in different areas, okay? And that's why Eridu is set apart. So this is the city center of Eridu. This is where commerce was, government. This is where the markets were and the temples. Um, 
in terms of libraries, not the temple of Ea, but the other temples for general worship and the libraries were, were here. Okay, this is where they were located. This is the only part of Eridu that's ever been excavated by archaeologists. That was when Oxford went there and when we had some other archaeologists from Iraq and I think Germany were there and they did do some digs there and they found those artifacts. That's where those came from. But then this it would, all work was abandoned. I will point out that there are other sites on in this, and we'll, as I was talking about earlier in the video, that were never even looked at. So this is, it's a bizarre um, symbol at the bottom there. Um, for anyone looking at this, I would love if you could send me your opinions on what that ancient symbol that almost looks like a dragonfly or an arrow, but I'd be love theories on that for anybody who's dug into that. But here you can see the walls of the ancient city, and we have photos of that as we go along to show this on the ground. But basically, this is what it looks like today, okay? No notice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this again, but this is like the highlight of this. No infrastructure at all. No roads leading to it, really. No fences. No one studying it. It's just left abandoned in the middle of the desert. And that's the whole point of why this, is, this, is, this campaign is being done and why I'm showing this. Now, this is the Temple of Ea the Abzu temple that we showed in the beginning on the only mountain in this entire area that sits up over the city and basically commands over the entire region. It's quite a um, interesting landmark, whether or not it's, it's natural or, or if they, was, they created that hill. Um, I would love to, we're gonna get more into that as we go along, but I would love to know more about that for sure. But this is basically just to the south of that city complex um, when you look it up on Google Maps. And the first thing you'll see is it's a large mountain structure right in the center that you really just looks like some eroded hill. Now look at the tire tracks. This is, this is one of the things that is so appalling right now because it's gonna start this. And this, is, this video is gonna go from um, you know, sort of getting into being upset, you know, but it'll end on a happy note as we go along. So don't worry. But I do need to, to show my frustrations for what's going on here. These are tire tracks from trucks, from people that just live in Iraq that know about this site and are coming out here and just driving around on the site. They're driving over extremely valuable ancient ruin relics, just driving over them, doing donuts down here, you can see, and driving over one of the most important ancient sites in the world. And nobody cares. And, and I'll watch these images as we go along here, because you're really going to see this. So this site that I'll show in some pictures is quite a large mountain complex of ancient temples. The temples are all eroded. They're so ancient that they're all eroded and they're, and they're underneath the soil and the mountains basically eroding away and revealing all these treasures, okay? Like it's like something out of a movie. Now, this is where, this is gonna make a lot of people really upset, but that's the whole point of getting a campaign awareness to get people angry to do something about this, okay? These are photos from 2020. This is basically like right now, okay? And these are people, and I'm not gonna go into who they are. I'm not gonna... I'm not going to go down that road, but I'm just going to tell you that I've looked into these people and they're just residents of, of cities in Iraq. They're not archaeologists. They're just people that heard about this, happened to do watch some videos or knew about it, and they came out here to loot the sites and then basically show off what they were finding and then selling everything most likely on the black market. And I have a lot of these photos, okay? And these photos are saved because I know for a fact that when this video comes out, those photos are probably going to get taken down. So these are captured now for everyone in the world to see what is going on in Eridu right now in the state of this site. This is the temple of Abzu Ea right there in the distance. Okay. That's what it looks like from afar as they're approaching it. And there's just sort of jogging towards it, this group of six people. Okay. And they're going to the site and they all share photos of what they found. Now, here's when they come up to this to the remnants of Eridu, some of the walls. You can still see, look at that. Notice yet again, I'm going to point out one more time. Look at the perimeter of the site. What do you see? Do you see any fences? Do you see any kind of areas that are blocked off because they're studying it or uncovering it? It's very obvious to anyone, regardless if you're interested in conspiracies or suppressed information, it's right here in front of you. This is 2020. This site is sitting here completely right in the open with no work that's been done on it. And it's just being looted. That's, that's it. It's just being looted right now. Who knows how much has been stolen? You ready for this? It gets worse. 
This is those individuals going up the temple mountain and showing all the remnants of things eroding down. Some of those aren't rocks or some of them are carved stone. You'll, as you'll, you'll see, the, the mountain was much larger and it's been eroding over thousands of years. And it's revealing all of these treasures from these temples because terrible catastrophes have happened here and basically destroyed everything. And we'll, we'll show more as we go along here. The bottom, the photo on the bottom left, anyone who knows me and has watched my channel knows I've used that a million times. I love that photograph. That photograph is showing the edge of the, the temple complex coming up the mountain and part of the temple walls showing coming out of the ground with like what looks like almost vitrification rock and burned rock on top from some kind of a catastrophe. Now, look at this other photo in the background. That's a photo they took. They're standing at that spot and they're walking up to the top of the temples. I just wanted to give a reference for that to show what these people are doing right now at the site. Notice no work has been done. That photo is at least 10 years old in the bottom left. Nothing has been done except what you're about to see. Just some of the things they started to find, right? Oh, just some cuneiform writing in an ancient tablet right here, unearthed and not cleaned off yet. Pottery, ceramics, more important than some people might know, pottery and ceramics were symbolic of when the priests would go up to these temples and give offerings. They would sometimes place precious jewels inside, sometimes place things like sage and other sacred herbs. Very important for offerings. There are pottery pieces strewn all over the place, just sitting there. That, and they're showing this because they're like, look at this, right? We're going to pick all this up. Look at what's right in front of you, Sit, standing out of the ground. You can't see this at any ancient site, basically anywhere in the world. These places have all been somewhat protected and are looked at, even if they haven't been fully excavated for one reason or another, sort of like Tiwanaku and Pumupunku in, in, uh, in Bolivia. But this site is completely different. It's just abandoned, deliberately abandoned. Now look at this pillar in the top left of the screen. That's a pillar Part of the temple pillar right there, you can see the markings in it. That's an actual temple pillar from the temple of Ia. Now, this is going to blow some people's minds and really make some people angry and also make people curious. These are two photos they took of on the temple. And it's you can see temple walls and tablets strewn all across this area where probably was an entrance to one of the one of the temple entrances, which is why these are all over the place. And look at the cuneiform tablets all over the ground in pieces, stories, ancient stories about our origins, our history, the gods coming down, the very beginnings of everything. And they're just being picked up by people and sold on the black market for thousands of dollars to secret um, private collections like the Skoyan collection. And then we'll never hear about them again because these are demonized tablets. And even if they were to make it out because of the significance, we're going to get into this, the significance of Ia Enki, what he plays in history as the serpent god, the god of the underworld, right? Pitchfork, trident, think about that. He became demonized. And that's why this site is the way it is. It's a twofold thing. One, because of the church. Supposedly, this may be Eden, the, the biblical Eden, okay? This is where the Enki, the snake, was worshipped. This is his, this is Ia's number, most important temple in the world, right here. So is it any coincidence that this was completely abandoned and is left to looters right now? On top of that, it predates all of history, supposedly. It's the first city. It could be 50, 100, more than 100,000 years old. If you were to add up the Sumerian king list, all the different ages of the kings, this city may be over 200,000 years old and likely rebuilt over time, which is what that more primitive brick is on that you see in the, in the other photos. But this site is truly important. And if you look at the, the screen, I haven't even talked about the other part yet. Besides the atrocities of these tablets just being taken away. And by the way, you could fit these together because that tablet would be part of other broken pieces. And that's how you would get the story. But these are most likely going to be sold in fragments separated and no one's ever going to know what it really says. Yes, that are, those are seashells on the right there. Think about that for me. And look at that. It's not just a few seashells. They're strewn across the site. Okay. Now, 
if Eridu predates what we think of as the Younger Dryas, the last ice age, when the Laurentide ice sheet in North America creeped all the way down past in, into New York City area all across the country, and all these ice sheets in the Northern Hemisphere basically melted from a massive coronal mass ejection or some incredible event, there is always talked about in these tablets, the Atrahasis, um, nearly Epic of Gilgamesh, nearly every tablet that discusses the flood tells it in the same way. And they state that a wall of water from a tsunami basically came over the land and destroyed everything, okay? And this area is near the Persian Gulf. So if you think of a, an enormous amount of water flooding in, coming both from the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, as well as from the Persian Gulf from two different sides converging, it would make sense that if this was a kind of a conversion zone, that these shells would end up getting stuck up here. That's truly incredible thinking about that. So those are likely shells from before the Younger Dryas and really prove the Younger Dryas catastrophes and that Eridu is one of these antediluvian pre, you know, pre-flood cities of antiquity, which is why this is so important. Now, this is going to make people really upset. Another one of these parties in the group showing these tablets coming out of the ground, sticking up, and then just showing cuneiform writing in these incredible um, there it, it's, it's a tablet, but it's probably one of the ones that went up on the murals in the wall of these temples and they're just holding it and they're about to go home and they're about to sell it for a lot of money and no one's ever going to see it again. And I want people to be angry because this is what's happening right now to this temple and these sites. They're just walking around. They're showing off the, this, what they're finding. This is the part of this video that I really would like to stop for a minute and, uh, just take a moment for people to understand the significance of this. The video doesn't end here. There's a whole nother section I wanna do that goes over um, even other new discoveries that make for how significant this site is to all of the world. Um, but before we do that, I wanna stop here and really talk about this for a minute. You've seen just what I showed you. Those are all genuine photos of what's happening right now in Eridu. You see there's no infrastructure. There's no one studying it. It's been left in the desert. We, as the people, if we don't do this, no one's going to do it. This is the time and we have to take action. We are losing one of the most important sites in all of ancient history. And every moment that goes by, this site is being pillaged more and more. So this is the campaign to protect Eridu. And I really hope people share this. Please create images, take this, create an image off it. Share this and do it. anything you guys can do that's in a nonviolent way to try to help this site be protected. And I've included some contact information down there. No phone numbers or anything because I want to keep it open to how you guys want to do it. But I highly encourage you to be creative to try to get this message across because, listen, they know about this site. They're well aware of it. This is very purposeful. So the only thing that's going to, way this is going to change is if people get angry enough and, and push enough that finally action is taken. And once action does get taken, you can't go back again. It'll then finally be protected because the world will know and the spotlight will be on them. So please reach out to these individuals. Please be creative and help out in any way you can to try to save this incredible site, even if it's just sharing this video or telling others that this is going on. This site right now um, really needs our help. So as stewards of these great libraries of the earth, it is our responsibility to protect what is being lost so that we understand everything from where we come from to who we are and where the first cities on earth were built and where it all began. This site needs to be completely protected and studied by the world and having all those, everything that comes out of it, every tablet to be on display. We need an Eridu display at the, at the, at the British Museum. We need have an entire display, not like the Ashurbanipal Library, but just for Eridu, okay? So thank you to everyone that helps out. And now I want to move on to some really, really exciting connections that will even um, spark even more interest in protecting this site. For those who don't know, so many of the temples on earth have now been understood to be mapping the heavens as above, so below, the hermetic law of correspondence seems to be one of the most important things that we find for the reasoning on why these sophisticated ancient lost civilizations built these structures all in different places of the world. Now, I'm showing just one of the more well-known ones, which is the, the, three, the three great pyramids of Giza and the three great pyramids of Teotihuacan in, in the, the Aztec realm of Mexico, which, by the way, were built pre-Aztec. 
just so you understand that, just like the pyramids of Giza were pre-dynastic, built before that, and then later cultures came after. But when these were originally built, they were essentially aligned at the time. If, if you go back and look at the procession of the equinox and we try to figure out where the stars were aligned, they were built to align with the three belt stars of Orion, 10,400 BC. That's if you add 2000 to that to make up to convert BC, you get about 12,500 years or so ago. That's the time period we're talking about. The between 12 and 13,000 years ago, these sites were built to align to, to all three belt stars of Orion. Now, going further, when you look up the ancient city of Gobekli Tepe, okay, and you, and you look at the ancient history of Egypt with Osiris and the embodiment of Osiris in Orion, what you find is that the original name of Gobekli Tepe, not, not Pot Bellied Hill, but the original name for it was Portisar. And Portisar to the, the locals means the umbilical cord of Osiris. Now, for those who don't know, Gobekli Tepe is found in the Anatolia region of Turkey, right above the Fertile Crescent, at the northern end of the Fertile Crescent. So I have been studying this and researching it and looking at star constellations, looking at Orion, looking at the three belt stars in the center. And I saw what only few others have potentially ever discovered yet. This is very, very new. I've seen one other reference to it so far, and that's it. I saw Eridanus. And I noticed how Eridanus has a, has a similar name to Eridu, and I noticed how it leads from Orion, like a snake, okay? And I thought that was really, really interesting. And I thought about the Hermetic Law of Correspondence and how the ancients built to map heaven on earth, okay? To create a mirror image of the heavens on earth in these ancient temples. And that's when I started digging into Eridanus, which means the serpent river of the cosmos. Think about Enki, his symbols of, as the serpent, the god of the manipulating the physical world, higher consciousness vibration, the divine feminine energy of creation. That's what the serpent represents. So here is a map of the Fertile Crescent now. And I, this was a smaller version earlier on, but now think about it for a second. If everything's mapping from the heaven on, heavens to earth, Look at this for a second. Eridu, located at the bottom part of the rivers of Euphrates and Tigris, with Gobekli Tepe at the top. Gobekli Tepe is the umbilical cord of Osiris, right? So it's the top here with the rivers of the Euphrates flowing from it down to the Persian Gulf, okay? And when you look at descriptions of Eridanus, you find that it, it describes very... Um, in, in, in these exact words, it describes the river flowing from the three belt stars of Orion to the south, southeast, exactly as the Euphrates flows, which if someone's wondering well, why it doesn't it depict, say, the Nile with Orion's belt, because the Nile flows the opposite direction. And we, we'll get into that a little more as we go along. But that's the evidence to show what I believe is an ancient connection of the stars for Eridu and the significance of the Euphrates River with Gobekli Tepe. And I theorize that because when you read things like the Atrahasis and how they, the, the Ajiji before humans were clearing the lifelines of the land, I, didn't, I don't think it just means for agriculture, lifelines like the lifelines up at Eridanus to connect, to connect that energy, okay? That's why this area was so incredibly fertile. And so I believe that these rivers used to have the Euphrates probably mirrored exactly the constellation of Eridanus more than 10, 12,000 years ago. Now, here's the Mula pin. This is an ancient cuneiform tablet that came from the libraries of Babylon. Now, one of the incredible things that comes out of tablet one is it talks about the southern path of Ea containing 15 stars or constellations. And it goes into the river Eridanus, begins humbly as all rivers do, at the feet of Orion, meandering toward the west, it loops back on the south and soon dips south, becoming lost from view to most of the northern observers. And it goes into the stars of Eridanus, winding and tumbling down until it gets to the, to the very end, a blue star. That's so fascinating, thinking about this on, on Earth, how it's mapped, okay? Leads us to this wonderful quote I found online. This was the only person that I've seen that has made this connection. So whoever, whoever wrote this, fantastic. I'm going I'm to quote them and read this right here. The path of Ea 
begins at or after heavenly Eridu, which on earth was the most ancient of the Sumerian cities. In heaven, astronomically, the same as the constellation Eridanus, known as the river of forgetfulness or the underworld. The underworld, the path of souls, the energy of the earth, the serpent, Enki, the Abzu temple. Abzu, remember, the temple on the mountain is called the Ea, Abzu temple. Abzu is the word for the underworld. It all connects. This is the famous connection to the stars for why Eridu is so important and why Gobekli is so important. The knowledge of Gobekli Tepe is the wisdom library of, of the ancient stars. It is the mapping the astronomical procession of the equinox, the zodiac calendars, all the information of the heavens is mapped there. It is the ancient library that connects to Eridu. This leads us to the end. After just talking about the connection with Gobekli Tepe and Eridu and the campaign for saving that ancient site of Eridu, we get into thinking about what this all means. I think what Gobekli Tepe was is potentially the most important astronomical library of the cosmos on the whole planet. It was the centerpiece for all the knowledge that disseminated down to the pyramids of Egypt and Eridu and all these ancient places that were basically physical libraries on earth. And this was a library of the cosmos. And Gobekli Tepe was mapping so many things, so many constellations, but really what it was mapping was the different ages of man, the energetic changes of the ages of man, the rise and fall of consciousness. Just like the Maya said, consciousness goes through stages. We are reaching the age of universal consciousness when we'll no longer be bounded by the third dimensional material world, but we'll rise above to truly understand what we really are. And as you can see here, this is just a, a, a rough depiction of these 12 ages of the Zodiac. And they represent a 2,100 year cycle each coming to the great year, which is over 25,000 years. And that great year signifies what they were essentially mapping. And here is the point where if you see where the sun is on the left side, we are going from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. That's why all of this is finally becoming known again. We're moving to a time of a golden age, but we're in that transition. And the transitions are always difficult to go through. So I want people to remember why these sites are so important and why it's so important that we preserve them. So please help me support the campaign to, to protect Eridu. Um, get these get this information out to as many people as possible so that this site can truly be saved and be studied by people all around the world so that we can get a hold of these tablets. If enough public awareness right now is on this site, then whatever is potentially excavated in the future can hopefully not go into some Vatican library in the darkness somewhere. And we can have it to study it, to be able to understand these ancient stories that connect us so much to our history, to understanding who we are and where we come from and how we're connected to the stars. Thank you so much. I hope everybody enjoyed this show. My name is Matthew LaCroix and my website is thestageoftime.com. My YouTube channel is my name, Matthew LaCroix. And I encourage you to check out my books, The Illusion of Us and the Stage of Time. And uh, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope we can share this message, okay? Get it out to as many people and preserve this incredible site of Eridu long into the future.